A good way to prepare for your A-level chemistry exam in organic chemistry is to start predicting what kinds of peaks you would expect to see on the hydrogen or even carbon-13 NMR spectrums for different structures. Here we're going to be looking at this molecule which is of 2-methylpropanol and I'll be predicting three features about its hydrogen NMR spectrum. I'll be looking at how many peaks I expect to have based on the number of non-equivalent hydrogen environments. I'll also be looking at what the ratio of those peaks is like to each other. And then finally, for each environment, I'll be having a look at the splitting pattern. So how many sub peaks do I expect my individual peaks to be split into based on their spin-spin coupling to other environments? So let's take a look at this 2-methylpropanol and see what we would expect to get in its hydrogen NMR spectrum. All right. So for this molecule, again, four pens might be a bit of a giveaway, but we would expect to see four different peaks. So let's have a look through. And then as I'm going, what I'm going to do is also label up what the ratio for that peak would be compared to the others. Because how many hydrogens there are within an environment tells us a bit about that ratio. Let's take a look as we go through. I'm going to try not to drop all these as well. So my first environment is going to be here for this OH group. That is a standalone hydrogen environment. And so I'm going to say that's environment A. And I'm going to say for A, it's going to have a 1 ratio compared to the other peaks because there's one hydrogen within that environment. It's an incredibly useful bit of information if you get this in the exam. Next up then, moving through the molecule here, I'm going to have an environment for this CH2 group, which I'm going to call B. And B, I would expect to have a 2 ratio compared to the other peaks because we can see there are two hydrogens within that environment. Moving up the chain a little bit, and you guessed it, this CH group is going to be environment C. And environment C is going to have a 1 ratio compared to the other peaks. Finally then, it may not have been obvious at the very start, but for this environment here, I've got these two CH3 groups. Now, I don't really need to loop up both of them here. It's just to show you where these environments are going to be. But these two CH3s are equivalent. So they are one environment. And that environment we'll call, obviously, D. And D is going to have a ratio compared to the other peaks of six. Because it's got those six hydrogens across both the CH3s. And the CH3s are completely equivalent because they're bonded to exactly the same section of the molecule just here. It's not just two random CH3s on a big structure. These two CH3s are absolutely identical to each other. Now what I need to do, since I've got my ratios of the peaks, my relative peak areas, these are often described as in exam questions, and I've got how many peaks I'm expecting, of course, I now need to look at the splitting pattern. So I'm going to do this in reverse order this time, looking at the individual splitting patterns I'd expect to see and whittle down these pens as we go. So for this environment, for environment D, I go from just one of the CH3s. I don't go from both separately and then do like an add up of everything. I go from just one of them to the next carbon up in the chain and count how many hydrogens are there. So what I'm going to do is go to this carbon just here and I count how many hydrogens are immediately on that uh, carbon atom. And that's going to be my value of n. n is the number of neighbouring hydrogens on the next carbon up. It's a nice way of thinking of it at A level. So my n value, if I go to this particular carbon here, is going to be equal to just 1. So it's a little low, but it doesn't matter, because then that allows me to figure out what the splitting pattern is going to be. And my splitting pattern is going to follow the n plus 1 rule. So 1 and 1 is 2, quick maths. And so that means environment D is going to be a doublet. Purely coincidental that it began with a D just there. Next up. For the next one, I'm going to go to C, and I can go in lots of different directions here. I've got loads of choices for this one. I do actually go to each of the separate CH3s when I travel out from here. So I'm going to be going in three different directions for this, so bear with me. What we can see here is we've got one, two, three hydrogens going in this direction, four, five, six going through there, and then seven and eight, eight as my value of n for this particular environment. That's massive. And according to the n plus one rule, what that means is I'm going to have a peak for C that is split into nine sub peaks. So it's definitely described as a multipler to A level. You can actually call it a non-tet if you want. That's the technical term for it. 
but a multiple of, of nine sub-peaks is absolutely fine for exams. What about environment B? Green pen down. For environment B, we're going to go up and then we hit the oxygen in this direction that bounces us back. So we don't go through there. We don't couple to any of the hydrogens on the other side of an O. That definitely doesn't happen. Just think of the O as bouncing us back the other way like it's a big ball. And then if we go up this way, well, we've only got this one just there. There's just that one little hydrogen there on the CH that's next to it here from environment B. It's getting quite chaotic with the arrows, isn't it? Now, for B, therefore, the N value is 1, and N plus 1 means that it's going to be a doublet. So it's another doublet, just like this one was here, but we can see they've got very different ratios, so it'd be easy to tell them apart from each other. Finally, then, we are down to our last pen, and we're at this environment all the way over here, and it's the hydrogen on an OH group. Now, for this, I don't really need to think about stuff. Because here, what I've definitely got is an N value of zero, because I can't couple this hydrogen environment to any others. What that means is N is zero, so N plus one is one. And unfortunately, this peak gets the lowly singlet. So it's just going to be a singlet. And so we can see here our full spectrum of peaks would be a singlet, a doublet, a nonta, and a doublet again in the ratio of one to two to one to six, all the way through here. And that's how we would predict what peaks we would get for this particular molecule. What we could then pair with this, if you've got one to hand, is the chemical shift scale. So you could put where you'd expect to see these across the x-axis on that delta scale that you get provided with in the A-level chemistry exams, regardless of your exam board. Hopefully taking you through this molecule has helped. Make sure you check out my other NMR tutorial videos on the channel before you go. And please give this video a like because it really does help support my channel. Until next time though, everybody, happy revising.